Hello everyone, welcome to episode 11 of Tomcraft. If you watched last episode, you remember we left off in the community area with a project there. And now you'll see I'm not in the community area anymore. That's because I've been hit by a wave of inspiration to finally do the buildings on the platforms on the base. And I've been struggling with that for quite some time, so I thought I'd come here and then just start the episode. And this is what I've got so far, I'm pretty proud of it. Um, I guess it's sort of like a warehouse building, and it's not as light colored as that, so I think it fits better. So I'm going to keep building this, and maybe build some more, and I'll come back with some progress in a bit. And don't worry, I haven't left the project in the community area completely. I just come here because, I mean, I've been hit by a wave of inspiration, like I said, and that sometimes is hard to come by, so I thought I'd just take advantage of it before it, well, went away. Yeah, I think I'm going to build several houses of different different heights and different uh, sizes, but they're all going to kind of represent this style. It's going to be sort of like a little industrial um, living space, I guess, and then maybe factories can be on the upper levels. I'm not sure yet. We'll figure that out. That's the beauty of working, you know, kind of ad-lib here. <laughs> there we go. I like this house quite a lot. Um, I could definitely see more versions of this house around. Of course, they'd have to be smaller since... That one takes a lot more space than I originally intended it to, but that's okay. I'll just have to think a little bit smaller than what I initially thought. Um, so yeah, I'm going to build a couple more. I'm really happy with the way it's turned out, so I'm going to stay with the style. I'm not going to change it at all. Um, it's fairly repli replicatable. Repli oh, geez, I cannot pronounce anything. I'm sure you know what word I'm trying to say, though. So I'm going to try to repeat that in um, smaller houses around. This will just be one of the bigger ones. So yeah. I'll come back once I've done a couple more. So I've done another house, and I think it looks pretty good, except for the roof is kind of awkward, so I'm going to probably change that up in a bit. But now I want to um, work on this house here, which is kind of going to be a double house, and I thought I'd lead you through it a little bit just to make things a little more interesting instead of me continuously giving progress updates every once in a while for the whole episode. So I'm just going to trek down there. And we're going to kind of start on that. This one's going to be a bit of a different house. It's going to be kind of, well, more difficult than the others because of, well, the two-block center. But we can work with it. I have a plan. Don't worry. So, as you can see here, I've completed the base. And you'll notice that one side is significantly higher than the other. That's because I'm going to try to make this a double-feature house, sort of like a townhouse, where it's two buildings but in one building. No, two homes in one building. Of course, this might not be a home. This could be a warehouse. I'm not sure. I'll decide that later. But yeah, so that's what I'm. That's how I'm solving with the two-block center. So it's essentially two houses, just like the, uh, just like this one over here, except they're going to have um, single-slope roofs. So it's going to be more, you know, it's gonna, it's not going to have a peak on each. It's going to have one single peak. Although this peak will be much higher than this peak. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get to that um, building up the frame and just figuring out where the clay is going to be, and I'll come back then. All right, as you can see here, I've pretty much completed the smaller half of the house. So I'm, I'm going to finish that, and then I'm going to start the bigger half of the house. But you can kind of um, start to tell where this is going. You can see the second pillar would line up just there, and then I just simply continue the wall with the um, second slab of the roof. So it would be two levels of roof, which I think would look great in, compar in contrast with um, the regular kind of roofs over here, just to kind of, well, differentiate things, like I said. So I'm just going to finish this and come back to you once I've started the taller house. There, I think this is shaping up pretty well. I'm, I'm very happy with this. And now for the bigger house, which will um, arch, I think. I think this is how far it's going to go over. And then, and then one more for good measure, just to give it some separation. Yeah, yeah, that should be enough room to uh, build what I need. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to finish the frame and see how that comes out. All right, here's the frame. I'm pretty happy with it. This one's going to have to come down one block, but I'm not too bothered by that. I'm sure I can work with that fine, so I'm going to finish building this house and come back then. And that is another house done. I'm, I'm really proud of this, actually. It's, this was fairly simple to build, but it looks, I think, pretty well. So I'm going to quickly go grab my elytra and do a little bit of a fly around with the remaining fireworks I have and see if it looks any good from the air. So yeah. Up in the air, and big reveal. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. As you can see here, I've um, modified the roof of that smaller house to make it look a little bit more sloped, and I've had to sacrifice some of the uh, filling of the uh, white terracotta, but I still think it looks appropriate for the situation. 
and it fills the space nicely. I'm, I'm really happy with this. Let's do one more look around. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build um, a few more houses on the other platform and see if I can get the same uh, result. And yeah, so I'm just going to get to that right now and I'll cut to when I've finished a couple. And just like that, I have two more houses. I could only fit two on there, which is unfortunate. I would have liked to have three, but I don't want to cram it too much or it gets too busy. Um, one mistake I did is I put it one block too far away from the edge, but that was to uh, make sure the path between them was big enough. But I'm a little bit bothered by that, so I might move this whole house over in the future and uh, make, sacrifice having a bigger path over there. But for now, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to grab my wings again and do a quick flyby, and then we can move on to other things this episode. All right, I'm up in the air again, and big reveal. Oh, and it doesn't load. <laughs> that looks kind of cool, though. Uh, hold on, let's see if this loads. There we go. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. I did the same sort of tall house as I did on the other side there. Why is my frame so low? Jeez. And um, one big house. I originally did two smaller houses. I didn't want to have two smaller houses, so I decided to move this one back entirely and rebuild it and make this one wider. So that's why it's a bit of a cube, but I think it pays off when having uh, two separate roof designs on the same one to give it a little bit of diversity. So. Now that I've finished these, I'm going to think about what else to do this episode before I move on to the community area again and hopefully finish the creeper farm. So I found one more thing to do before returning to the community area and that was complete the pathways through here. And you'll notice they aren't spruce like everything else. That is because I didn't want it to blend in too much with the spruce framework of the houses. So I did the next closest color which was um, gray terracotta and I think it looks pretty nice. It, it contrasts enough with the houses that it looks like a proper pathway, but it's close enough to the uh, spruce planks that it doesn't make too much of a harsh transition. So, I'll just do a quick flyby of the other area too so you can see. There isn't that much pathway in the other area. This area is much larger, but you can see there it kind of goes through the buildings a bit, and I've also done the staircases. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to go to the community area and hopefully finish the creeper farm with bad. So I'm in the community area and now we're just waiting for Vad and I thought while I was waiting I would uh, play with the audio settings on my microphone because I've gotten complaints that I've been too quiet so I've turned it up a little bit but not too much. The reason I had it down in the first place was because there's a slight uh, hiss to my microphone as you might be able to hear if you turn your sound up. So I've kind of adjusted it a little bit so hopefully you'll be able to hear me better. Um, I'm going to keep this for the rest of the episode. Um, if you have any complaints or requests for my audio, please just tell me in the comments below. So yeah, now we'll just uh, come back once Vad is online and hopefully we'll have this farm done. Before Vad and... Oh my god. <laughs> this is sure yeah, unusual. Was... I never would it have expected so... this to happen out of anything. <laughs> yeah, me neither. So that last clip was quite unusual. Um, what happened was, is one of us got the bad omen effect and wandered into the spawn area, which caused a raid to occur. Now, I accidentally had a bed in the spawn area, so it detected the villager um, custom trader mobs that we have, and the bed, and established a village there, and a raid happened. So we fought off the raid, and now we're here. So, Vad's online now, so we're going to do our best to continue with the creeper farm, and hopefully we'll get somewhere with it then. So yeah. Let's jump into a call with him and see if we can figure this out. Okay, um, tell me a little bit about what you're what you're planning for this, because I'm quite lost with uh, what the next step is of this creeper farm. <laughs> okay, uh, well, to begin with, uh, we need to put in the last two cats. I just added one with all of this lag that we're having on this server right now, because with all of the, uh, well, we're four players the right now. four players. <laughs> and we're, like, lagging like hell. <laughs> uh, right now we need to finish putting the last cat in, and after that, well, we have to cover up, cover everything up, and mostly put a lot of these nice little things on the floor, called torches, mm -hmm. all over the underground. Yeah, 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 we'll have to go and, caving. <laughs> and after that, I'll have to finish the redstone to bring all of this nice little gunpowder all the way up I say all the way up all the way up to this nice little building that I'm showing that I'm going towards to all right. so that we can have all of the uh, gunpowder that we need 
<laughs> and a AFK section maybe on top or still keeping the same one for the sheeps. Yeah. And the sheep head over here. Yeah, and we can also possibly fit a zero tick sugarcane farm in the future, just above there, and then make it a gunpowder fact, a uh, rocket factory. That too, yeah, yeah. But yeah. with the light that we're having right now, oh, yeah, a no, zero tick no, farm for sure would kill time. the server. Yeah. Thanks. Um. So yeah, we're gonna uh, start building what what he talked about, and I'll come back in a bit when we have finished some more progress on that. After that last recording segment, I left for a while, and while I was gone, Vad went ahead and built this. Now, he said to me that I can modify this to make it look more industrial, so I'm going to do just that. I've brought my materials. Don't pay attention to the Shulkabox name. That's unrelated. I was just reusing one from before. I brought my materials, and I'm going to try to um, industrialize this a little bit. So, I'll do that real quick, and I'll be right back with the build. And here it is. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. I tried to make it simple, not too complex, in order to kind of, well, make it a little bit cartoony, but also give it a industrial vibe, and I think this um, type of ribbing structure definitely accomplishes that. Um, I also added some light green in order to make that color apparent because it wasn't on the exterior, and I thought it would be appropriate to have it somewhere. So yeah, I'm super happy with this, and now I want to check out its workings because I'm pretty sure everyone wants to know kind of the process of it. So here we are in spectator mode and as you can see Vad's aggressively lit up every cave he can find in order to um, make the creeper spawns the best they can be. Um, we haven't lit up the overworld yet but that's not as important as lighting up the caves because mob spawning checks from the lowest point up towards the highest point instead of from the highest point to the lowest point. So things should spawn fairly easily down here without any difficulty. Now, the reason they're not spawning now is because no one's AFK in the proper spot, because I'm the only one in the area. Um, so yeah, but normally there'd be a couple spawns and they'd run off the edge onto the magma blocks, where the minecart comes and picks them up and deposits them in these hoppers, which send them on a water stream all the way over here and up to the wooden storage room. You can sort of see it there, and there's some hoppers in the air. So yeah, that's, that's just the inner workings of the farm all done. And to prove that this farm was not a complete waste of time, here are some drops that have been collected when Vad did a small AFK session in the right spot. So yeah, I'm really happy with this project. I'm glad it's pretty much done. Um, in the future, we might come and retrofit this uh, storage room, but that's more of Vad's project, so it's kind of iffy right now. So yeah, that's pretty. That's that's great. Um, that's a nice project conclusion right there, if I've ever seen one. And just in time, too, I ate my last piece of bread. <laughs> and before I finish this video up, I thought I'd come here and build some more houses, so I did that. Here they are. I'm super happy with them. Um, you'll, you'll notice there's a lot of blank spaces. I, I couldn't fit houses comfortably here, so I'm going to use this as sort of a recreational space for the residents. Maybe a little garden or a tiny, tiny park. Um, you can see there's another space up here. I can add maybe some potted trees or some potted bushes or something. So yeah, don't worry. I'll fill all the empty spaces with something and hopefully detail this base quite extensively in the future. But I'll have to finish all the other um, things first. So I'm just in the air to have a look at the progress we made on the base. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. And I'd also like to use this time to um, let you guys know that we have a new player. His name is Hypergum, and he just left. He's having some internet problems today. But you might have noticed him on the right footage. Um, so yeah, he, he's extremely fun to record with. I highly recommend checking out his channel. It'll be in the description with all the other channels under the fellow players heading. So yeah, please do check him out. He's, he's extremely fun to watch. He's already made his first episode. So yeah, that's pretty much it for me today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and have a fantastic day. Goodbye. Hi, Future Kian here. I'd just like to say a massive thank you to everyone who left a positive comment on my last video. It means a lot to me, and I appreciate it a lot. Also, I had the request to name a cat Ricky Gervais, so let's do that right now. Let's see. There we go. Ricky Gervais, everyone. Anyways, goodbye for real. <laughs>